Okay, folks, today we're going to get a little bit more complex. This is a double outlet right ventricle talk. Um, this is one of the more complex heart defects that you'll see in a child. Um, I'll try to explain it as we go along, and hopefully you'll get the gist of it. Um, I'm not going to go deep into the different types of double outlet right ventricle because that's questions that you should ask your peds cardiologist who's reading the exam. Um, there are different types, you know, where the aorta and the pulmonary artery are positioned. So it would be important for you to, you know, give, get an idea as to the different kinds. It'll help you when you're imaging to know exactly how to do that. So, but again, something for your peds cardiologist to give you an idea of how it's imaged and what she needs or he needs to interpret it. So I uh, found a nice picture of a normal heart on the left and a double outlet right ventricle on the right. Um, as you can see in the normal heart, we see the normal flow, the blood flow going up the LV outflow tract and out the aorta from the left ventricle and from the right ventricle up the PA and to the lungs. In a double outlet right ventricle, there's a problem with the positioning of these vessels. So you have the normal flow going up the PA from the right ventricle, but you also have an aortic valve and an aorta coming off the right side of the heart. So the right side of the heart is basically pumping blood for both ventricles from just the right ventricle. Now there will always, almost always, I should always put almost in front of everything, be a VSD. If there is not a VSD then the PDA better be open um, because if it's not um, you'll suddenly have basically no blood flow to the left side of the heart, so it's very important that the ductus be open. Um, a lot of times there's an ASD and there can be quite a few different congenital defects associated with this, so it sometimes is a double outlet right ventricle with pulmonary stenosis. It can be a double outlet right ventricle with tetralogy of Fallot. It just goes on and on. There's a lot of different things that can be associated with it. Okay, so another view, same concept. A little bit better drawing, I think. Uh, this is a normal heart here on the left side, obviously, with the normal orientation of the great vessels. And then here on the right side, again, you see the aorta here and the pulmonary artery here, both coming off the right side of the heart. There is a big VSD. Um, if I haven't mentioned it before, there will almost always be a VSD. Look for the size of the VSD. It, you hopefully will see a very large VSD um, that will help with the, chil the child's blood flow. Um, and uh, a lot of times, I mean they're showing what would be considered a muscular VSD in this picture. A lot of times it's more membranous and it goes down quite a ways. Um, so if that's the case and you know you can see sometimes an ASD that starts near the the base of the heart and uh, it would be considered uh, um, kind of an AV canal with double outlet right ventricle so again a lot of these things can be associated with other defects. Okay, I feel like showing you a significant amount of pictures that show the defect is valuable because once you do see it you'll understand it a little bit better. It is hard to find echo images. Um, I have a couple that uh, show a double outlet right ventricle. It is very rare. Um, over my career I would say you know 10 or 15 maybe 20 cases of double outlet right ventricle and I was in some of the bigger city hospitals in Chicago. Um, it's just not that common. Um, for some reason it was more common when I was young in um, in uh, places like Loyola University and Rush Press St. Luke's University. Um, I saw quite m more of them there than I saw in any other place. So um, it depends upon if you're 
working at a center where you get babies transferred from other places. And if that's the case, most of the time they'll have a dedicated pediatric equitech. So, but if you're learning from that person and you see a double outlet, you can ask lots of questions. All right, so here's everything drawn out with the um, labels for each vessel. So I put this up here so you could freeze the picture and look at where everything is and get a better idea of how each uh, vessel is lined up and also where the rest of the chambers are and the VSD and everything of that nature. And you can truly, I mean, you can really see that both of these vessels are coming out of the right ventricle. There's just no doubt about it. Um, this term, DORV, is the shortened, you know, obviously the abbreviation for uh, double outlet right ventricle. You're going to hear that a lot if you're dealing with one um, because. Uh, Doctors love abbreviations. I don't know what it is. It's something in their DNA. But anyhow, that's what you'll see a lot of. So, Okay, this is the one that I wanted to show you the most. This is what I would see most of the time, which would be a VSD in the membranous area of the ventricular septum. Um, here they show you what looks like a large PDA, which is very common too. Um, but this, for some reason, is what you'll normally see. That's where the VSD will be. Um, I don't know why or what the mechanism is for that when the heart's developing. Um, if you want to study fetal echo, uh, be ready for a real challenge. I did take the test and pass it, but then I found out that I had to take the ultrasound physics test again, and I decided that that wasn't worth it. Um, so anyhow, I did pass the fetal, and I can tell you that that was a difficult test, but it is possible to learn how the heart develops and why these defects come into play um, by just studying fetal echocardiography, and it'll tell you, you know, what's, how the defect, how its origin starts and why it happens. So anyhow... Okay, this, this picture is a little hard to figure out, but it is a kind of a short axis view. Um, one of the things that I wanted to point out is to call it a double right a double outlet right ventricle as compared to a tetralogy, a fallot, um, which I'll explain at a later date, um, you need to have at least a fifty percent override of the aorta, which is right about here. So you can see where the override is here, and it has to be at least 50%. The number may have changed since I was involved, but that was what I was taught, that it has to be at least 50% to call it a double outlet right ventricle. So um, remember that when you're looking at it, um, because a lot of times that VSD will be in the membranous septum, and if you see the aorta and it's not quite 50% or, you know, lesser than 50%, then you're not looking at a double outlet right. Most likely you're looking at a tetralogy of full O. Probably should have put this slide first, but obviously the definition is a congenital cardiac anomaly in which both great arteries rise wholly or in a large part from the right ventricle. It is then a type of ventricular atrial connection. Um, the history, um, Tausick Bing, um, Dr. Tausick and Dr. Bing were both pioneers in pediatric cardiology. Um, they Their names are over so many different things, it's ridiculous. Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that, um, surgical procedures and stuff like that that they pioneered and also described uh, you will see in uh, if you do some reading on congenital heart defects um, so they described it in 1949 which is a while ago um, Braun I'm not familiar with but he had a the first one to describe a double outlet right ventricle with PS pulmonary stenosis in 1952 the very first repair, which of course 
seems like would be done at Mayo Clinic, and it was um, in 1957. And then Dr. Lev, who I actually worked with for a little while, um, clarified the Tausick Bang in 1972. Um, I wish I got to know him a little bit better. He was near the end of his career when I talked to him, or when I worked with him, but he was just brilliant. Um, so um, this is a history. I like history, so I figured I'd give you some. Okay, this this is an important part of double outlet right ventricle, which is the repair and uh, how they actually make this work for a child. Um, a child with a double outlet right ventricle, even after it's been repaired, is they are kind of uh, held back out of gym class and they can't play sports and stuff like that. I mean, they're able to do some things, but... Um, they can't do a lot of things. Um, to explain what you're looking at here, um, this is a hole punched into the right ventricle, and a what they used to use was a Dacron um, tube, and then sew it right into the pulmonary arteries. And then they would put a patch from the septal defect to the septal defect, which would be all the way through here. And uh, the aorta would be left in position so that the left ventricle then would be shunting blood, or putting, I'm not shunting, but pushing blood out the aorta. So what you've done is you've basically repaired the defect, but you've given the, um, the outlet part of the, vent of the PA you put it right in the middle of the RV. Still works, and it does the job. The only problem is this Dacron tube um, uh, will have to be replaced as the child grows. So let's say they do this surgery at, you know, one month. Well, by the time the child gets to maybe seven, they might have to replace it again. And then usually when they get to 18 or something they replace it again and that's, that'll be the last time they replace it because the body's usually fully grown by then. Um, what I've always noticed is you know they monitor whether or not this tube, the Dacron tube, is starting to get stenotic and that's a sign that there's you know the, the thing's getting too small and it needs to be replaced again. So these children with double outlet right ventricle usually go three, sometimes four surgical procedures before everything is set and they can go on with their adult life. Um, and hopefully you don't end up with any complications, but most of the time they do. So anyhow, that's the repair. Okay, so here is basically the view you're going to want to get. This is a fetal echo, but... Uh, when the baby's born, you're going to need to get some form of this view. So, um, but this is how it's diagnosed in utero. Um, what you need to do first is get a uh, nice four-chamber view, which should be here. And the VSD is very visible right there. So you have the right side and the left side. And then you go ahead and angle up a little bit more anterior towards the top of the belly of the, um, usually I should say, of the mom and all of a sudden you'll see these two vessels coming off the same ventricle, which is here. Then you know you're dealing with a double outlet right and uh, we already know there's a VSD so that's letting blood shunt back and forth which is good as long as that VSD doesn't close there won't be any problems with, you know, they'll take the baby C-section, they don't want to put any stress on the baby, but um, at least you can get them out and, you know, wait a month or so and try to repair the problem. Um, the repair will deter, it's determined by how significant a problem the baby's having with respirations or, you know, if the baby's cyanotic or whatever, there could be a lot of different reasons. So... Anyhow, this is a very complex defect. It is something that you probably will not see very often, but 
it's good to know what it is and uh, remember the key to it is make sure you know you want to see a big VSD if possible and you also want to see both vessels coming off the RV and uh, if there there's true double outlet right ventricle it'll be pretty obvious that both vessels are orientated towards the RV there may be some override but it'll be minimal um, of the aorta so keep this in mind this is one of the defects you could see um, it's very very rare but it does pop up every once in a while and if you can identify it you'll you'll be really ahead of the game so anyhow have a good day I hope that wasn't too long and we'll talk to you next time